kitchen fundamental stock making. We're going to make some brown stock. These are veal bones, lots of joint bones, high in collagen. Add a lot of body to the stock. So we have some tomato paste, three gallons of cold water. Here's the uh, ingredients for the sachet that we'll tie. And your standard mirepoix, which is 50% onions, 25% carrots, and 25% celery. So the first step in making brown stock is roasting the bones. We'll brush the bones with some tomato paste. Caramelizing the bones in the oven will add some depth of flavor and color to the finished stock. This is the single significant step between a, a brown stock and a white stock. You could make a white stock with beef or veal bones. You just wouldn't roast them first. So these will caramelize in the oven and a lot of uh, that darkness that comes with caramelization will be transferred to the stock. You also get a lot of flavor. So the fat renders into the roasting pan. A fond is formed. It's called fond. That's the little bits of stuff that form in the bottom of a pan when you cook meat in it or anything really. So you don't need to completely paint these bones edge to edge with tomato paste. And these will roast in a fairly high temperature oven, 375, 400, for about 40, 40 minutes, sometimes up to an hour. Again, you just caramelize them until you get as much as you want on there. Right, they're pretty pretty well coated. And I'll just go wash my hands for the next step. It's got our oven set at just a hair below four hundred here. Go ahead and just stick the whole pan right in. Let that go for a while. So the next step is we'll get everything going for the sachet. These are some just parsley stems. A little bit of leaf on there too. This is a good way to use up your parsley stems in your kitchen. A couple of bay leaves. This is a very traditional sachet that would be used for making brown stock. That's about a tablespoon of fresh thyme and a few cloves of crushed garlic. I also have here about, about a teaspoon of whole peppercorns that have just been crushed. This is just a piece of cheesecloth that's been folded a few times to make multiple layers. Simply just fold that up. And tie the sachet off with a piece of kitchen twine. Cheesecloth allows the liquid to pass through and over these ingredients so they have uh, something to impart their flavor into. 
It's good to note here that I left a, a length of string on one side, a longer piece. That'll be used to tie to the handle of the stock pot so you can easily remove the sachet when the time comes. So the bones have been in for about 45 minutes. You can see a lot of browning has taken place. I stirred these around once during the roasting process. Got some good caramelization going. A lot of fat has rendered down into the bottom of the pan. So you can go ahead and transfer these caramelized bones into the stock pot. Now all that fond that's built up on the bottom of the pan is packed with flavor. So we're going to want to get all of that off of the pan and into this stock. But before we do that, we're going to want to caramelize the mirepoix as well. You can see all that fond at the bottom of the pan. So we can go ahead and just do that right on the range in the same roasting pan. Turn a couple burners up to about medium. And we'll have our mirepoix, 50% onions, 25% carrots, and 25% celery. And then we'll just caramelize those right in the roasting pan. Caramelize them in the fat that's rendered off the bones. So I've just slightly caramelized these. There's quite a bit of sugars and stuff built up on the bottom. You can deglaze the pan with some of the cold water that you have for the stock. Scrape up all the, the bits that have formed. Once the cold water hits that pan, most of that fond should just release right off very easily. This process called deglazing. It's used a lot in many different applications. So I've got most of the fond deglazed off. You can go ahead and dump the entire contents of the roasting pan into the stock pot. So what we have now is fond vegetables, roasted bones, and now we're going to pour in the remaining cold water. The ratio of bones to water should be about five pounds of bones for every gallon of water. Move this over to the range. Here's our sachet that we assembled earlier. Now I'll just tie that longer piece of string onto the handle of the stock pot again. It'll make it easy to fish it out before we start straining this. Make sure everything is underneath the surface of the water. You're not going to get any flavor out of things above the surface of the water. So we'll just turn that up, bring it up to a simmer, 
You never want your stock to boil. That'll make it cloudy. So we brought it up to a simmer, and it's been simmering for a long time, about eight hours at least. This one went overnight, but you're going to want to at least do it for eight hours. Go ahead and remove the sachet. We've got a substantial amount of reduction from it simmering overnight. The handles are hot. So now it's time to strain this. And what I have here is a, a little station set up. This is a regular china cap. It's got little holes in it for straining. And then this is a chinois, a fine mesh strainer, which catches most small particulate. You could strain it through a few layers of cheesecloth. I find that just straining it multiple times through a chinois does, does the trick just fine. So first, strain it through the china cap, which has the larger holes. This is mainly just to catch all of the vegetable material and the bones. Be very careful in doing this. You don't want to spill hot stock on you or someone else or on your workstation. So that's just been coarsely strained through a china cap. You can still see there's a lot of particulate floating around in it. You could probably never overstrain your stock, so if you want to strain it 20 times, go right ahead. Here you can see a lot of the little pieces floating around in there. So we'll strain it one more time through the chinois. Once you've strained your stock as many times as needed for your kitchen applications, you'll want to get it cooled down as fast as possible, get it out of the temperature danger zone. And the best way to do that, or one of the ways to do that, one of the better ways, is in an ice bath. We also have a, inserted an ice wand which is just a plastic container that's filled with water that you freeze. So, get those stocks cooled rapidly.